Hello everyone, my name is Roy Jafari and in this video I'm going to teach you how to predict using regression model, specifically linear regression model. So if you haven't watched my video that I use linear regression to predict tomorrow's Amazon stock price, uh, please stop this video and go and watch that video first. In that video, what we did, we basically talked about uh, what is prediction as far as the data mining task prediction that is used in many different cases. But in this video, we are going to see how we can actually uh, do the prediction from you know the sort of like the, the beginning stage of like actually having the data that is ready for prediction and actually making sure that the model we have is ready or actually adding value as far as us predicting what we want to predict. So um, if you haven't watched that video, make sure to watch that video. It's a much shorter and perhaps more intuitive understanding of prediction. And then come watch this video that we will talk in details about many aspects of uh, prediction task and we will also do that by looking at an example uh, data set. The data set we are going to be using in this video is Toyota Corolla.csv. I recently created a video that we went through that data set and we sort of got to know that data set. Also, I want you to have watched that video before coming to this video. So make sure you have watched the two videos that we have, you have to watch before uh, watching this video. And then uh, let's get to All right, so these are the modules that we are going to be using throughout this video. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of them on at once. Uh, the data set Toyota Corolla, and like we saw in the previous video, we're not going to be uh, using the whole data. We're going to be using a subset of this data, and these are the attributes we're going to be using. So I'm just going to like make sure that this is the data that I'm going to be working with. So as we saw, when we have a prediction model, and what we want to do, basically we want to um, see if there is a relationship between the target or dependent attribute and the predictors or independent attributes. We want to see if there are patterns in the data that can help us use the independent attributes or the predictors to predict the dependent attribute or the target. So that's all there is to it. So we want to use these attributes to perhaps see if we can uh, predict tar target, which is the price. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we need to do uh, when we want to run linear regression is to make sure all of our data is presented with numbers. Or in another term, we want to make sure all of our data are numerical. We did see that some of our data was categorical. Uh, one of the ways you can sort of switch your data from categorical to um, numerical and it's actually perhaps the most typical way, there are better ways, um, this is sort of the default way. I mean, if, there, if those other ways doesn't work, this one is sort of like always there for you, it's to use binary coding. Binary coding um, is done by this uh, pandas function, get dummies. So let's go, let me go ahead and just run this. Once you run this, the attribute that was categorical was fuel type. And it's now it's fuel type diesel and fuel type petrol. You can see uh, the attribute had three possibilities, but there is two attribute added here. The reason is that you only need um, two of the states to be binary code, the third state can be deducted from these other states. Uh, that means if all of these are zero, that means the other one, um, that's the other possibility. So that's why when you use this get dummies function, um, it's always re it always returns n minus one, n being the number of possibilities of your uh, categorical attribute. We did have uh, also, other two categorical attributes, met, metallic color, or automatic, and these were also already binary coded, so we didn't need to do anything about that. So this is for us to sort of get to look at what this code 
do for us. But now let's go ahead and separate our data into data X and data Y. So basically these are our predictors uh, or our X and this is our Y or our target. So we separate the data into these two and then run our regression model. When we run our regression model, our adjusted R score is 0.86, which is pretty high and nice. Uh, but we see that there are a couple of attributes such, such as metallic color, uh, CC, automatic, and fuel type diesel, and also doors at the level of significance levels of 0 0.05, and we can see that we were not able to reject the null hypothesis that they are not related. So we can actually make sure that our model is more stable by removing these attributes because, um, you know, statistically we were not able to reject that they were not related. So here I have removed um, metallic color and I have removed the CC. So once we remove those, then we run the model again and we see that all this time also automatic number of doors and fuel type diesel and um, they are still uh, you know not showing that they are meaningful for this model all i'm looking at is the p-value so we go ahead and also uh, remove those remove the uh, doors and the automatic and I'm also making sure that the fuel type diesel is dropped. Uh, I mean, the reason that I wasn't able to do it here is because the fuel type diesel is created after the get dummy spot. So I'm dropping it after that. So once I run this last part, we can I can see that... Um, okay, I have to run this first and then run the, this. I can see that all of my attributes that are now in the model or it's you know used for um, you know fitting or training the model there are meaning now that we can see all of the attributes that are in this model that are used for training the linear regression are meaningful now we have this stable regression model that is capable of predicting the price of a new car if you have their age, number of kilometers that they have ran, the horsepower, quarterly tax, weight, and fuel type petrol. This, statistically speaking, this is a good model. But uh, other than this statistical fact that our score is pretty high, what else do we have to say about this model? So um, in, the rest of, for, in the, the rest of this video, we are going to focus on um, a specific design of experiment, basically that is going to provide more validity or more defenses as far as how these predictive models are being useful. So what we do uh, with prediction and classification is a, what we call train test validation mechanism. Basically what you do, uh, I have summarized it in this picture, you uh, split your data into uh, two parts you call one train set and another part test set. The X and Y parts is already obvious. I mean, when we want to do prediction, we have to have our X or independent attributes and our Y and the dependent attribute. So, by these two splits, our data set is going to be split into four um, sort of like chunks of data. Uh, we have X train. Y train, X test, and Y test. What we do basically, we use the regression model to see if we can find a relationship among the population of the train set between the X and Y. And if we found that uh, we have a stable uh, relationship that we can package in linear regression, and then once we have that, uh, so pay attention, so far we haven't used the tested data at all. So once we have that, now we bring that regression model, we use only the train set to uh, train it, and then apply it to the test set. Uh, we use this data to predict values of the price for this test set. 
So once we have this prediction and we actually have actual values, now we have something to compare and see how good our prediction model is doing. So basically this is the whole mechanism of train and test it. So we're gonna do that in this video. So um, the way you wanna go about uh, sort of like doing this split is the best and easiest way is to use this function train test split uh, that is from let's go ahead and check that is from the sklearn model model selection so that's the easiest way to go about this i uh, just basically run this code and you say this is my data x which is you know the um, x part of the data all of those independent attributes and then this is your uh, data y which is your dependent attribute and then you say you want your test size to be 30 percent of your data so once I do that, um, now my data is sort of like segregated, being segregated into four uh, chunks as here. So let's go ahead and look at our data, the shape of the data before. Before was, you know, 436 uh, and six attribute. Um, but after our data, you can see that it has four chunks. So we have uh, basically train, x train y train x test and y, uh, y test here's our the design of experiments that we want to use to show that you know this regression model has merits has you know giving us valuable um, information or is giving us valuable outcome our, our valuable prediction basically so we split our data which we did into 70 70 percent train set and 30 percent test set and predict the price of the test set with the following three methods and compare the per their performance. In the first method, I just use a random number between minimum and the maximum train set uh, price. And then on the second met method, I use a naive mean. Basically, uh, whenever I wanna predict um, the test set uh, price, I say, what was the uh, mean of the train set price? I just use that every time. And the third one, I use a linear regression as we sort of like come up with that you know, stable linear regression. So let's go ahead and uh, create a result DF. So these, these, this, these are my, uh, in the indexes of my test set. And uh, this is my method one, method two, method three. And these are the actual values. So the first thing I do, I put the actual value here. So these are the actual prices of these cars these these cars are in the test set so first i use a naive mean which basically means every time i want to do a prediction i use the uh, y train or the price in the train set and uh, the mean the mean of that those that column so every time i does that i do that and these are all of my prediction for all of these tested values m2 prediction uh, for these tested value using this method the third method I'm using a random um, generation. Basically, I'm generating um, you know as many as as many numbers in the test set, um, a random number between the minimum and maximum um, that I observe in the train set. So once I run this, now I also have these predictions so these are random but you know nonetheless a prediction that i am sort of like you know assuming as prediction and now let's go ahead and look at sort of like the difference between these two predictions i mean we would assume that the random prediction must be pretty bad basically so uh, i what i do here i sort of like get the absolute difference between these prediction and the actual values and then i have used the uh, seaborn heat map to sort of show me uh, sort of the difference between these two so the m1 was the random one the m2 was the uh, mean naive mean method and we can see the naive mean method uh, you know by and large is doing much better job because the differences are much lower there so now let's go ahead and uh, sort of do this with our prediction model that we have so this was the uh, you know stable prediction model this regression model that we had um, one of the good things about this OLS function sm.OLS function is that it gives us these p-values but it doesn't sort of package the prediction model for us to 
uh, conveniently use. Uh, for us to do that, it's better for us to use the linear regression model from the SK layer model. It's just much more easier package. So I say I use X train and Y train, and then basically um, I uh, look at the the coefficient that this model is giving me. And once I look at this model, I see that these coefficients are identical with the coefficient that uh, was given here. So it's basically giving me the same linear regression model. But you know, here's the catch here. Now I can just say that predict x test and just does the prediction for me. So it's much more convenient to use. So once I do uh, I, I do that, now I have an M3, which is uh, the prediction based on the linear regression. Now I can also add that you know absolute difference between m3 and actual it's added here now i also use the seaborne heat map and now i can see that uh, my the linear regression is meaningfully adding to the you know to the prediction of the prices i mean it's doing much better you know visually we can see the errors is less um, between the naive usage of mean and the um, you know the using the linear regression of course it's much better than the random prediction so this is the visual way of looking at uh, you know how good our model is doing but there are also some um, metrics to do this basically these metrics um, sort of like come up with a number that encapsulate this visual that we can see with our eyes um, if you um, you know have a programming language that comes can come up with these visuals easier i mean i always like looking at the visual but uh, these metrics are also in the literature and also are important to know because some people perhaps don't like these visuals so you, you you have to understand these metrics as well so these metrics we have mean error root mean squared error this is the most popular one we have mean absolute error and then we have mean absolute percentage error. Uh, we these have uh, you know slightly different implications with them. Um, you want to like you know sort of understand them, but we're not going to talk about them here. Let's just go ahead and um, create this data frame. I call it metric DF and um, use different Python. Um, and pandas uh, functionality to calculate them basically so once you do that you will see that m3 also across the board except for the me uh, which is not a really uh, very uh, valid uh, metric for uh, seeing the goodness of a prediction model um, but in terms of rsme mae and mape we can see uh, the m3 which was a linear regression is doing much better uh, performance than the rest of the algorithms and than the rest of the methods so in this video we were able to um, use prediction model of linear regression we were able to use linear regression to sort of like see the pattern in the data set toyota corolla and use those pattern to predict um, the price not only did we do that but also we ran a specific type of experiment, you know, trained and tested, which is something you will do a lot. I mean, basically, this is the name of the game, train test set, um, in the, um, you know, in making sure that your model is uh, doing well or doing better than chance, uh, is using this way of validation, basically. So we use that to make sure that the prediction we are doing is actually better than random one. Not, and not only that, it's actually better than inputting uh, the um, mean value as a prediction.